Hi friends, hope you're all doing well. So today is the 15th day in our data analytics using Microsoft Excel training. We will be looking, uh, we'll, as always, let's do a recap of what we had discussed earlier in the previous session and then we shall proceed, okay? Uh, before we begin, can I get a confirmation on whether I'm audible and the screen visible, please? Um, uh, okay, thank you so much. Right, we'll get started. So in the previous session, we had looked at date and time functions, how to manipulate date and time based on our requirement. So we looked at a lot of functions like today, now, date difference, how to fetch the year part of a date, month part of a date, quarter part of a date. And when we are given separate dates, using the date function, we can um, you know, combine year, quarter, month, and date together and create a date field also. So like that work days, in, uh, and then computing the work days by considering holidays as well. All this was covered. Then we spoke about get and transform data. So I will do a quick recap on get and transform data. And then we will start off with today's uh, agenda. We will be focusing on what if analysis today. Okay, so that is the plan for today, the last session in our training. So very quickly, I'm going to open the data source that we shall use today. The link will be shared with you and uh, you can take the data source from there. So before we start with today's thing, let's do a quick recap of the last topic that we discussed in the previous session. It was get and transform data, right? So I'll open this with Office 365, Microsoft 365, all right. So under get and transform data, how do we do it? when we have to bring data from different data sources. Okay, let's say here I'm working with Excel, but I have some data in a PDF file and I might want to use that in Excel. How do we bring data from external data sources into Excel? You can go up to the data menu uh, and on the data ribbon, we have get data option. We can get data from files, other databases, and we have a lot of other options here. So let's say I would like to bring data from a PDF file. Okay, so when I choose that option, Excel will now prompt me to select the PDF file, which contains the data that I need to access. So I'm going to select the file and click on import. Now, what would this do is it will open up a wizard where it will show me all the pages that are present in this file and it also gives me a preview of the data in each of those pages. Suppose now, let's say I want data from page number two. But when I look at the way the data is, uh, you know, uh, appearing here, I can see there is a little bit of confusion that Excel is facing with respect to the titles and the subheadings. So instead of directly saying, go ahead and load this data, we can go ahead and first transform the data a little bit by using the transform data button that you see at the bottom of this window. So once I see transform data, it opens up a new uh, window where we can transform. First thing is the rows that are present, the first three rows are not necessary. So there is an option to remove rows. If I click on that, it is going to give me certain other options, remove blank rows, so we can remove all the rows that are blank. An entire row that is blank can be eliminated. Remove duplicates, okay? So remove alternate rows, remove bottom rows and top rows. I'll go with top rows and now I'll be prompted to enter the number of rows from the top which need to be removed, three, okay, three. So now it's looking better, but still there is a little bit confusion with respect to the column header, the name of the column. So here we have an option called as use first row as headers. So once I click on that, now you see nicely date is the name of this column. 
open is the name of the second column high is the name of the third column so even that confusion is gone next thing is with the data type okay this is actually date so i can click here upon the data type icon which is being read as text for now and i will change it the problem is my system local is india and in india the date format is what day month and year but this data that i have has a different date format it has month day and year so i need to specify that this is date however the format of the date is different so i'm going to click here and say that i would like to change the data type using local using local so once i do that it's going to see see here the local is actually english india on my machine but that is not the date uh, local okay it is different it is english united states so if i choose english united states from the list of options that i have here the date will be read as month then day then year it will understand that the first part is month as per us local second part is day and the third part is the year data type to be assigned is date you can see the sample input values so you can see the 4 17 2017 similar to this now we can um see that it is now formatted as date and it is converted into my system local what is my system local it is day month and year so it understood the native local means the one that is in the pdf file from there it is converting into a format that is compatible with my machine with indian local and it has transformed the date into day month and year okay so like that we can do for now if we look at this this is dollar symbol followed by the currency it is actually currency but tablo uh, excel is taking it as string so we can click there and we can again tell use the local this is dollar this is basically um, united states dollar okay usd here the currency is in usd so i will say this is english united states and it is a currency okay so like this we can go ahead and keep on now you see it is able to understand this is numerical and look at the data type here also you can go and change the data type it has recognized it as currency okay so like this we can apply some formatting things we can change the data types adjust everything and proceed so here it has understood the data type as decimal number look at the top here decimal number the icon is this if i click there it is a decimal number all right so here no change is required so wherever data types need to be changed we can go ahead and change them and after completing the preparation part after completing the data preparation part on the top left corner of the screen is an option called as close and load so once i click there it will close that transform window which was helping me to transform the data and it loads the data into the excel sheet okay so it loaded it into what is it a simple range of values no it is a table how do we know that this is a table we have filters over there and further the table design contextual ribbon has appeared we can even change the structure ribbon okay we can use different colors over here this was the default all right so this is how we can bring in data from external sources into excel and then we can work with that data okay i hope it is clear now this was a, a quick recap of the last concept that we discussed in the previous session now we will start off with today's concepts we are going to begin with something called as goal seek so what if analysis is our agenda for today isn't it what if analysis this is a very very interesting feature which excel provides very interesting now from where do we access or obtain the what if analysis option we must go up to the data ribbon on the data ribbon in the forecast group we have what if analysis okay 
So it will help us try out different scenarios, okay, various values. It will help us to figure out. If we click on that option, we can see that there are three options over there. There is scenario manager, there is goal seek, and there is data table that can be created. So we will begin with the simplest of the three, the easiest and the most interesting also, goal seek. Okay. So upon the data ribbon in the forecast group of options, there is what if analysis. And when I click on that, there are three other options which pop up, which are related to what if analysis. I'm going to select goal C. But before we go here, let's just see what is the data that we are working with. Here, let's say I've taken a loan from a bank. Okay. And this is uh, how I'm going. I plan on repaying. This is the repayment schedule. Okay. The rate of interest at which the, go, uh, the bank has given me the loan is 3.5%. The total number of months, this is 3.5% per annum, 3.5% per annum and 60 months is the repayment uh, tenure, okay, the term or tenure and I'm supposed to pay 24,000 rupees a month, okay, I'm supposed to pay 24,000 rupees a month. Now, I want uh, sorry, the loan amount is 24,000 rupees. Okay, the loan amount means the principal, isn't it? The principal is so and so. Now, let's first of all calculate if I were to borrow 24,000 rupees at 3.5% rate of interest, and if I were to repay it in 60 months, then what is the monthly installment that I will have to pay? Each month, how much should I pay? Okay, so to calculate the uh, data like this, the payment amount, okay, to calculate the payment amount, there is one function in Excel, which is called PMT. So equal to PMT. It is for computing the payment for a loan based on constant payments and constant rate of interest. What are the arguments that it expects? The rate. 3.5%, but this is annually. But, uh, as we need to divide it by 12 to compute monthly, okay? Comma, then the number of uh, months, the period, okay? N-P-E-R is period, okay? Which is 60 months. I'll repay it in 60 months, comma. Principal value is 24,000 rupees. So now if I close the bracket and hit enter, it will show me how much I need to pay every month. The reason why there is a negative symbol over there is because this is the amount of money that will be coming out of my account, that will be taken out from my account in order to pay for the loan. That is why the negative symbol. So if we don't want to see the negative symbol, we can just prefix this with a minus sign up here, okay, in the formula. So 436 rupees is essentially what I will have to pay. Now, let's say when the bank person says that, okay, this is what you have to pay, I realize that I can pay slightly more than that. I can pay 500 rupees every month. Okay. So if I am ready to pay 500, then how much extra amount can I borrow is one question in my mind because I have the capacity of repaying at the rate of um, 500 rupees a month. What is the additional amount that I will, I will be allowed to borrow? Or if I go ahead and pay 500 a month, then how soon can I close my loan? Rather than paying for 60 months, if we increase the payment amount, we can close it earlier, right? So now we want to check if this changes to 500, then what other things can change and how, by how much value? So if, when you have such questions in mind, you can try the what if analysis goal seek. Okay. So once I select goal seek, you can see it is asking me set cell. Which cell's value is supposed to be set and to what? I want to set this value, the payment that I would like to make to 
500. I would like to set the value in this cell to 500 by changing which cells, by changing the loan amount. So first question is, suppose I start paying 500, then how much extra can I borrow? What is the amount that I, 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 I'm allowed to borrow? Okay, so by changing this value. Now, once I click okay, you can see, done. It's telling that if you're ready to pay 500, then you can borrow 27,485. Now, let's say I'm not, um, uh, I don't want to take the risk. I may not be able to pay uh, whatever it was. I will be able to pay only 400 now. So this value, I would like to change it to 400. If I'm, if I feel I can pay only 400, then how much mm -hmm. loan amount can I expect? Okay, how much loan amount can I expect? So if I'm going to pay only 400, the loan that I will get is only 21,988. Okay, I hope you're understanding this, uh, the, how the goal seek works. Now let's try one more scenario. Goal seek. Now I would like to set the value in this cell to 500. I'm capable of paying 500 rupees. Then within how many months will the loan get cleared? Let's go change the term now. Earlier we were changing the principal value, right? Now let us change the term. If I'm uh, ready to pay 500, then will the term reduce? If yes, then by how much? So it will reduce and I can repay my loan in 47 months if I'm taking this much amount. Getting it? If I'm taking this amount, then I can repay my loan in 47 months. Let me undo that. Undo, undo. Go back to my original data. So <clears throat> let's try one more time for, for clarity's sake. This is what I want to change. I will be able to pay 500. If so, then what will be the tenure? If so, what will be the tenure? So what was earlier taking 60 months will now be cleared in 51 or 52 months if we round it off. Okay. If I'm agreeing to pay 500, then the loan would get cleared soon, sooner than 60 months. Just about 52 months will be taken. Okay. So these kind of scenarios you can explore and you can test and you can get an answer to very quickly using the goal seek option under what if analysis. Very, very interesting feature. Let's see one more example. Now, these are the salaries that I'm offering to my employees. Okay. They are expecting a hike. Let's say year end compensation reviews have happened, performance uh, assessment has happened. Now they are all expecting a hike, and I've decided to give all of them a hike of 20%. Okay. So if I'm giving them a hike of 20%, what is going to be the increment? What is going to be the hike or the increment? This we know how will be compute equal to the salary multiplied by the percentage. Okay, and this has to be logged in place, right? Percentage has to be absolute referencing, whereas the salary should be a relative reference. When I move to the next row, it should reference to the next value. But percentage is an absolute reference, so I will change this to absolute reference by hitting the F4 function key. Done. So if this person, whoever is getting so-and-so salary, is given a hike of 20%, means I will have to increase the salary by 5,852. This is the increment amount. Okay, and just copying it down there. These are the increments that I have to provide. Provided I'm giving, if I'm giving 20% increment, these are the increments. So what will be the new revised salary be? The revised salary or the new salary of the employees will be the original salary plus whatever amount of hike has been provided to them. This is all going to be relative referencing because when I copy it down, I want it to take this amount and this salary. So you can see over here it is A3 plus B3. If I come down here, A4 plus B4, right? We already discussed relative and absolute referencing. Now I would like to find out what is the total salary now? What is the total amount that I'm paying out for the salaries of the employees? Earlier, If 
from my company's account. If this much amount was going towards the salaries of the employees, now that I have given a 20% hike, what is the amount that will go away from my company's account every month towards payment of salaries? 543,762. Now let's say the management has given an upper limit. They said, go ahead, give increment to your employees. However, make sure that it does not cross 5 lakhs, 500,000. This is the upper limit. Okay, how, how much percent you will increase, to whom you will give more increment, to whom you will give slightly lesser increment, I leave it to you. But this is the cap. Whatever you do, the budget that I am allocating to the salaries of the employees should not exceed 500,000. Now, if I am going to be very lenient and give 20% hike to my employees, the amount increases by 43,762. And the management is clearly, it has clearly given an upper limit. They said, no, you can't go beyond this. This is what I have allocated towards the salaries from the budget. Don't go beyond that. So now I'm in a fix. I can't give 20%. I can't be so liberal. I have to reduce the percentage of increment or height. So what I will do is I will set this value to 500,000. And if that were to happen, by how much is this supposed to reduce? Isn't it? We can't give so much. We have to reduce it means the percentage incremented should reduce. So by how much should this be reduced? If this is supposed to be fixed at 500,000, okay? So what we'll do, we will go here and take the help of goal seek. I need to set the value in this cell to 500,000 by changing the percentage increase in the salary. Okay, so once I click on okay, you will notice it is computing and it has set up. All the figures have changed. So if I have to stick to that 500,000 as the upper limit, then I can give an increment of only 10%. If I'm going to give 10% increment, then it will be possible. I can go ahead and make sure that this is you know, uh, 500,000. So that is the idea, basically. Hope you all understood. It's not exactly 10. If I do a double click, it's 10.32. 10.34, something like that. 10.34% of um, increment is allowed. Okay. So this is how goal seek will work. Very, very nice and interesting feature to know. Now that we've understood goal seek, we will proceed to understand about something called as scenario manager. Now scenario manager is also a very, very interesting feature. It will allow us to create different scenarios and then it will allow us to switch between those scenarios. It will, if there are different scenarios that we might want to compare against each other, compare and contrast, and then understand what, we, what would be the optimum, the best scenario for us, then we can use this feature to compare and contrast between different scenarios and thereby conclude or come, come to a, a conclusion on what would be the best scenario to go for. So over here is one particular um, you know, data that I have. This is the monthly sales of an organization. How much sales that a company makes every month? Okay, so this is what they are getting, let's say. This is their sales. But how much are they spending towards marketing or advertising? 5,000 rupees. They are selling some products worth 1 lakh. But for that, they are spending 5,000 towards marketing. Salaries given to the employees, 40,000. Let's say they are paying rent for their office, 4,000. And let's say some miscellaneous expenses maybe stationary, maybe, um, you know, some small parties in the office, something like that, some miscellaneous um, thing, 1,000. Okay, so the total cost, 
when I add all of this, this is my total cost. It is the summation of the data from B4 to B7. This is the total cost, 50,000. So from sales, if I exclude whatever is the total cost, then the profit that I that the company makes, which is B1 minus B9, okay, is 50,000. This is the profit made by the company. This is the profit made by the company, okay? This is the scenario. What is the total sales happening? What is the cost? So when we do sales minus total cost, what we end up is the profit. That is the profit. Now I need to, let's say, test a few scenarios. I would like to check a few scenarios, do some analysis on this data. If the sales are supposed to be increased to, let's say, 1,50,000. If I would like to somehow ensure that the sales increases to 1,50,000. So if I'm aiming at higher sales, Obviously, what I need to spend towards marketing will increase. I might have to do a little more advertising. I might have to be a little more aggressive with respect to advertising. Then when we are targeting at higher sales, we will need more employees also to work. So obviously, the salaries will increase because number of employees will increase. Maybe miscellaneous expenses a little bit, they will increase or not. We are not sure. So if the sales has to increase, obviously the spend on marketing has to increase and the salaries also will increase, thereby the total cost will increase. And then what impact will it have on the profit? Okay, so this is one scenario I would like to check. Now, so then the next scenario, okay, the second scenario is, what if the sales target is reduced to 50,000? We don't have to be so, um, let's say, competitive. We can go a little slow. One month, we want to you know, help people just relax, reduce the goals and targets, reduce the load on them. So I'll reduce the goal to maybe, okay, let's say 75,000. Sales target is reduced. So when the sales target reduces, marketing exp expenditure also will reduce. We may not want to advertise so much. Or let's say we want to try without marketing expenditure at all. Okay, if we stop marketing for a month, if we don't generate new ads or generate any advertisements, what will happen? Okay, let's keep this zero. And salaries also, I don't have to pay so much. They, they, are, they are not doing overtime. They're not under immense pressure, my employees. So they're okay to take slightly lesser salaries. In that case, what will be the total cost? And in that case, how much profit is the company going to make? So these are different questions that are running through my mind. Okay. So if I have to increase the sales, what will happen? If I were to reduce the sales a little, what will happen? How much am I compromising on the profit? But I want a comparison of all these scenarios running in my mind. I need a report where I can compare everything and decide what, what to do next. So what we will do here is we will go ahead to the what if analysis tool up there. And this time, work with scenario manager. Okay, there are already some scenarios which I will, I think, delete. Okay, and add. So if I'm trying to add a scenario, it's just the original that I will keep as is because I want to compare it with the rest of the data. Okay, so this is my original data. The cells that contain my data are one is this one. Then this range, okay, these are the changing cells. If I click on okay, now you can see what we have in the input range of cells. B1, B4, B5, B6, B7, this is becoming so difficult. Imagine if we have many more cells then to be able to remember these cell references every time to go and cross check what is in B1, what is in B4, what is in B5, what is in B6, would not be such a, such an easy task. It, it doesn't look so good and it's also not very convenient to do. So even before doing this, what I'll do is, I will create named ranges. Okay, we had discussed creating named ranges. How do we create it? Up in the formula bar, we have an option to create name ranges, create from selection. Okay, 
So first, let me select this. Okay, and I'll create from selection. And the name of that range should be taken from the left column. Monthly sales is the name of this range. The next one, I will quickly create from selection for marketing. Then for the salaries. Then office rent. Then miscellaneous expenditure. Left column has the name. Okay, so I have name ranges created. Now we will go ahead and try out our what if scenario. Data ribbon, what if scenario manager. So I'll add a scenario, which I will call as original data that I have. By changing which cells, the cell B1, then maybe all of these. Okay, we'll see. Okay. So you can see monthly sales is so-and-so right now. Marketing is 5,000, salary is 40,000, office rent 4,000 and miscellaneous 1,000. Not doing anything. I'll just click on OK. My original data is one scenario. Now I will add another scenario for high sales. If I'm going to try and improve the sales, then what? So reference range is this and this, okay? And uh, Reference range, I think, was not correct. Okay, it's anyway doing relative referencing. We'll leave it there. It's okay. Huh. So what is my high sales scenario? I want to increase the sales by 50,000. If that has to increase, then obviously the spend towards marketing has to increase. Let's say I'm willing to um, increase it to 15,000. We want to just go all out on marketing. And our people will be putting in more time, more effort. So they would expect slightly higher uh, salaries or, you know, overtime compensation paid to them. And that's it. Maybe a little bit of tea and coffee consumption also will increase in the pantry. So we'll increase that to 1500 miscellaneous. Okay. So this is one scenario. If I am targeting at high sales, obviously I need to make more spend in the marketing need to hire more people or give overtime compensation for the existing employees. Some miscellaneous expenses, the maintenance of the pantry, like tea, coffee, whatever I have to provide to them. I'm going to increase that allowance also. This is another scenario, high sales. Now let's add another scenario where we are trying to relax a little. And focus uh, on not very, very high number, but we'll be happy with even 75,000 being the sales. Okay. I think this is, huh. I'll keep it like this. So for this, marketing can be reduced. So I'll, I'll, I'll basically reduce it to just 1,000 bare minimum marketing I will do. Salaries also I'll cut down. I'll give them only 25,000. Miscellaneous also I will reduce the allowances to only 500. Okay. So by making these changes, what will happen? Let's check. So all my scenarios are ready. Okay. All my scenarios are ready and I will say show. Okay, this is original data. Okay, this is our original data. Focus on this part. Okay, focus on the column B with high sales. Let's see. So if I, these were the figures that I entered, right? Targeting at a, a higher sales, spending more towards marketing, spending more on salaries and miscellaneous things. So if this is going to be the sales, cost will also increase accordingly and the profit. Earlier, we were making a profit of 50,000. Now, the profit has improved by 19,500. So, we have almost increased the sales by 50%, but the profit is not growing at the same rate. Profit is slightly lesser only, right? Slightly lesser than expected. Okay. With low sales scenario, what will happen? Let's see. 
if I reduce it to 75,000, I don't have to spend much on marketing. I don't have to spend much on salaries or miscellaneous. My costs are reducing and the profit is 45, 44,500. Original profit was 50,000 and very little um, reduction is happening in the profit. So if we slightly reduce the sales target, the load on the employees, all the marketing costs, the total costs are reducing drastically. And the impact on the profit is not adverse. It is not so bad. Just 5,500 reduction in the profit. Isn't it? So like this, you can try different scenarios. Now I'll go back to original. And I would like to see all these three scenarios side by side and compare them. Okay, then what to do? We can click on the summary option. Scenario summary. Result I want to see starting from cell. Let's say D1. Okay. You can see the scenario summary. Anyway, whatever it has come. Okay, so what is the summary? This was the original data. This is high sales scenario. And this is low sales scenario. Okay, now you can save this also, this sheet also as a part of your Excel workbook and you can share it with your client. So we use scenario manager and we created three different scenarios. Now it is up to them to decide what they might want to do. Okay. So that is about scenario manager. The last option under what if that we will be looking at is data table. See the result of multiple inputs at the same time data table. So that is what we will see now. Again, I'm going back to the rate of interest example. So let's say I am I, I'm planning to borrow 10 lakhs from the bank. Okay. Uh, and that is a million, 1 million. 10 lakhs is 1 million. And the yearly interest rate is 8%. The tenure, loan tenure is 30 months. So here I've already used the payment function to calculate the payment. So it is uh, the rate of interest, 8% in B2 divided by 12. Why divided by 12? Because this is yearly rate and I need monthly rate, okay? Then we have NPER, that is number of um, months, the period, which is 30. And then I have the principal value PV, the principal value, which is so much. So upon applying this formula, if I were to borrow 10 lakh rupees, 1 million from the bank at 8% rate of interest for a tenure of 30 months, then I will have to pay so-and-so amount every month. This is the amount that I'll have to pay. Now I would like to check a few scenarios. Okay, it is like a combination of goal seek and scenario manager that uh, data table, I want to check if I can somehow, if, if there is, if the interest, if the rate of interest is going to be 6%, then what will happen? If I can find a bank that is uh, interested in giving me the loan for just 6%, then what is the monthly payment that I will have to make? If somebody is willing to pay, uh, give me the loan at 6.5%. Or let's say if I can manage to get the same loan at 7% or 7.5 or 8. 8 is anyway the scenario. Now some, let's say after I've taken the loan, what if the RBI increases the rate of interest to 8.5%? 8, 8 or suddenly they decide to increase it to 9%. Then how will it impact my repayments amount? Okay. Now, this is, these are the different rates of interest. And for each of the rate of interest, I would like to check what is the monthly payment I'll have to make. So here we have to give the monthly payment. The current monthly payment, how is it computed? This is the value, right? So this is going to reference this cell. And I will lock it in place. Currently at 8%, this is what I'll have to pay. But at different rates of interest, what do I have to pay is what we have to compute. So for data table, we have to select the complete range first. After selecting the range, we go up here and choose data table option. 
we can give up to two inputs. It will allow two variables, okay? Row input cell, column input cell. I have only one variable, the rate of interest which keeps changing based on which the payment has to be computed and displayed. The formula for the payment is already here and this cell is referencing this cell which is having the formula for the payment. So row input, I have nothing. Column input that I'm giving like this, down here, column input is the rate of interest, okay? So with this, now you see it will compute. This is like magic. So it is telling that if at all a bank agrees to lend the money at 6% as the rate of interest, I'll have to pay only so much. At 64.5%, it will be so much, 7 and 7.5. And at 8%, which is the current scenario with the bank that I'm having the discussion, it is so much. You can see cross check over here. Okay, check this against this. If RBI increases the loan percentage someday to 8.5, then my monthly loan payment amount will increase to 37,117. If they increase it to 9%, then that further increases the loan on the person who is going to pay, isn't it? It will increase to 37,348. Now the formatting is not proper. So what I will do is use the format painter and the formatting that is used here, same formatting, I'll apply here. Okay, so this is one nice way of computing. With goal seek, each time you have to go and change, right? But with this data table, you are doing a goal seek only by varying the interest rate. We are computing the monthly payments. But in one go, we are able to get so many different uh, uh, options over there. For so many different rate of interest, we are able to see the monthly payment value. Okay. Now, we can also use two variables, as I told you. We can use two variables. So let's say I will keep the principal, uh, the loan amount here. So for now, it is 10 lakhs, right? This is the loan amount. What if I would like to borrow slightly more than that? What if I might want to borrow? Mm -hmm. Let's increase to 15. 15 lakhs. Okay. What if I borrow 20, 25, 30? Enough, maybe. Or okay, we'll go up to 40, no problem. If I, instead of 10, if I borrow 15, or if I borrow 20, or 25, or 30, then accordingly, how much should I have to pay? For various rate of interest again, if it is 6%, then how much will I have to pay? If I take that amount at 6.5%, how much will I have to pay? If I take that amount at 7, 7.5, 8, 8.5 or even 9 for that matter. Okay, then how much will I have to pay? So here I have two variables for the data table that I am trying to create. There are two things. <clears throat> okay, there are two variables. And the payment amount is what we are trying to calculate, which is already computed here. So I'll reference it equal to this one and lock it in place. Okay. So I want Excel to fill in this table for me. I want Excel to fill in this table for me. And for each loan amount there, at different rates of interest, I want it to compute the payment, the monthly payment. Okay, the monthly payment has to be computed for each of these combinations, for each of these combinations. And then I will figure out what is going to happen and what would be the right amount to you know, take and uh, what would be an optimum rate of interest for which I can go and negotiate with the bank and try to figure out some deal with the bank. So we'll go up to the data ribbon, go to what if analysis, and this time data table. Row input cell. What do we have along the row? We have the rate of interest. Column input cell. What do we have down along the column? The loan amount. Okay, these are our actual values, but for different combinations we are trying now. And because the data is highlighted, because the area is highlighted, which is having different rates of interest, having different 
loan amounts and the formula is referencing them. So once I click on OK, you see it got filled. Okay, let us just increase the space so that they will come up nicely. I think uh, space is not sufficient. If you see hashes like that, it means the space in that column is not sufficient to show the entire data. <clears throat> but we have too much, <clears throat> too many decimals here. Little bit of formatting reduce the indentation. I mean, the decimals are not necessary in this format and shall apply to the whole thing. This, the formatting in this cell without the decimals, okay, formatting in this cell, copy and apply here. Now it is nice. Okay. So let's reduce the column size. This is nice. These were the rate of interest, different rates of interest. And this was the actual value, the monthly payment. So if we manage to borrow this at 6% rate of interest, this is what we have to pay. You will see that this column here is equal to the data in this column here. Why? Because both of them are at uh, different rates of interest. For a loan amount of 10 lakhs, they are at different rates of interest. You will see these numbers exactly match the first row here. Okay. Now, if the loan amount was increased to 15, 000, uh, 15 uh, lakhs, then how much will we have to pay at different rates of interest? So if I borrowed 30 lakhs for 8.5% rate of interest, and if I'm going to repay it in 30 months, then I'll have to pay so much every month for 30 months, which will help me repay at 8.5% rate of interest. Okay, now let's say if I were to borrow 25 lakhs and if I manage to get it at 7.5%, what will be the monthly payment? So you go along 25 lakhs here, go along 7.5% as the interest here. So I'll have to pay 91,649 rupees. Okay, so that, that's the idea. I hope you all understood the data table scenario. We can go with one column or we can go with two variables. Okay, this is a one variable data table. This is two variable data table and that's it. These are the two options that we have. We can't, we can't have more than that. If you look at what if analysis data tables, right? There is row input and there's column input, right? Which means you can go up to two variable data tables, not beyond that. Okay, so that is, uh, this is all I had planned for today. The last session, I wanted to take up what if analysis and uh, explain these really interesting features. So I'll just open, check for the questions now, okay? Any questions, doubts, anything that you all might have, please put it, I will go through it now. Okay, one question is, uh, do I teach in Hindi? No, we don't have anything planned in Hindi yet. But if there is enough demand, we can start a series on Hindi. That is not uh, an issue. We can do that. We will take it into consideration, okay? Yeah, today is the last day of this Excel training that we are having. That's it. Today is the last day. Yes. Data science not available in the link which you provided. 
data science data sets are not provided not there they would be there in that link just check once to become a data analyst you need to know both you need to be familiar with tableau as well as power bi but keep tableau as your first preference learn that thoroughly then you can go to power bi because uh, the demand for power bi is slightly it's reducing these days so keep your if if you have to rank them keep tableau as your first priority then power bi is the second one both of them are necessary though both of them are necessary to become a good data analyst is this enough to crack interview no see excel is an ocean all right there are n number of capabilities that the tool has and we have covered uh, at least to a significant extent whatever is important now going forward what you can do is you can go to the help option okay and you can uh, explore each function there are so many functions so for each function you can go and explore so don't stop your learning journey over here see under formulas also we have used financial there are logical functions text functions date and time functions look up and reference functions and all right and then for each function help is also provided so i wouldn't say this is enough to crack the interview it is an ocean with a lot of other capabilities in fact our regular training is for 24 hours that is we we cover it uh, much more extensively okay so you have to put in some effort from your side also <clears throat> yeah this would be a good beginning are these topics enough to handle real time tasks and track interviews yeah this would be a good beginning the skills required for data analyst you should be familiar with excel you should be familiar with sql structured query language and you should be able to work with a few data visualization tools like tableau power bi google data studio um data visualization with python yeah all these things would be uh, expected from a data analyst okay see those of you interested you can visit our 360 digit mg website and over there you can check out our data analytics program okay and there you will get the complete details about exactly what all topics will be covered as a part of our data analytics certification course with placement assistance okay so you you can download the brochure and you can check it out <clears throat> so if uh, subscribe to the channel uh, in the channel there are a lot of videos we have a lot of videos on tableau also you can go through the videos which are there on the channel for tableau and um, for projects and all you will have to enroll for the course for real time projects uh, and internship such things you will have to enroll for the course okay any other questions from your side okay thank you all so much uh, please do like the videos and share them across with us with with your circle okay whoever is there in your circle because excel i think is a basic skill that everybody should know not only data analysts or data scientists it's a basic skill that everybody should know even students 10th standard 9th standard students also should be familiar with this so yeah please do share it across and thank you all so much for all of your support and uh, thank you all for liking the videos all the sessions thank you so much all the best to all of you bye bye